What's up, beautiful people? It's your girl, Christy Mack. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to dive into a crucial topic that's affecting millions of people worldwide, which is hemodialysis complication. Are you a dialysis patient or a caregiver or just a health professional wanting to enhance your knowledge? Well, I will stick around because I'm going to go over my hemodialysis complications. So if you guys know anyone that can benefit from these types of videos, please go ahead and share it with them. And if you're new to my channel, what's up? Take a moment to hit subscribe to be notified when I post my next kidney videos. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. So before we go ahead and dive into the complications, let's go over what hemodialysis is and why it's such a lifeline for those that have kidney disease. So for those of you who do not know, hemodialysis is a medical procedure that filters waste and excess fluid from the blood because the kidneys cannot. Think of it as a vital substitute for kidney function. So now that I give you guys that small description, let's just go ahead and jump right into the complications because that's what everybody wants to hear. What did I actually go through? right? So the first thing that I actually went through was hypotension, which is meaning that my blood pressure dropped really low most of the times when I was in dialysis. And that's where I would start getting like the headaches and, you know, the blurry visions. But not even that, I dealt with hypertension as well, too. There was many times I sat in that chair and my blood pressure would shoot up, right? And then they would have to give me a pill. Um, I can't remember the name of the pill right now. Um, but they would have to give me a blood pressure pill to spike it to come right back down. So that was very common. One of the complications that I dealt with when I was uh, sitting in that chair, I remember one time, like I literally, another complication that I passed, I passed out, right? Like I sat in that chair and I went, you guys, I felt my body. I promise you, I felt my body leaving. And I tried so hard to get somebody, but I think I was so far gone that my hand couldn't even really get up because I remember this clear as day. So I was sitting in my chair and, you know, they hooked me up, whatnot, time went by and I was trying to take a nap because I'm always trying to take a nap if I wasn't on the phone with my mom. And so I remember seeing everybody sitting at like the little triage area and I felt my body just going. And I tried to talk and go like this to wave. And then I like was gone. And then I remember everybody just over time, I remember hearing people speaking and over me and calling my name. And so one of my favorite dialysis um, nurses, he was there like shaking me, trying to get me up. So supposedly I was like, foaming out the mouth um I, it, it was so bad like I, I had stuff like my clothes was all messed up and he used to like print shirts and designs and stuff so he went in his car and he got me a new shirt out of his shirts that he used to sell um so he got me a shirt and I could change my clothes but I remember feeling so weak so drained that I couldn't like even function and so yeah I passed out in the middle of dialysis and it was not a good feeling. I was so angry. I was so upset because this wasn't a complication that anyone has ever told me about. The people that I know that's been on dialysis, no one ever spoke about this. No one ever said, hey, this might happen to you depending on, you know, what your levels are, or whatever your whatever is going on. But that was a shock to me. I, I think I cried so much. Um, when I went home because I couldn't believe that I felt like wow could I have died in my chair at dialysis is how I felt and like it took a while for anybody to even realize and so I feel like man that was that was a tough one but that was another complication for you guys so another one that I used to deal with is muscle cramps painful muscle cramps in my legs right because they're pulling you know everything and i'm like with the machines i just felt like sometimes my leg will cramp up sometimes and mind you i'm stuck to a chair with two needles in my arms so it's like where am i going like really where am i going i'm not really going anywhere so i would like tap my legs um i'll try to shake a little bit there were times where i would call my nurse over and say you need to unhook me i need you to pause this i need to get up i need to go to the bathroom i need to walk because i need to stretch out because this was so painful i remember one time i tried to jump up and they're like no 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 don't jump don't move we're gonna come and unhook you like i need somebody to come 
quickly. And the nice thing is that they're always hiring a lot of different people. I'm not trying to say that's a good thing in a way, but the fact that we had a lot of staff, not a turnover rate, no, that's a different story, but we had a lot of staff. So people will help out other people's patients if somebody else is tied up. So they were really good at that at my centers, um, both centers that I went to, because I did go to two different centers um, when I was going through dialysis. Uh, so that's another one is muscle cramp. So if you guys experience muscle cramp, let me know. And as we're going through this, I want to hear about some of your complications as well, too. I don't just put all my business out here. I need you guys to do because not only I'm just kidding, guys, but really and truly these kind of discussions and talks are helping other people. Just like I said previously, how me passing out and foaming and all type of craziness that happened at dialysis somebody else might have experienced that or no one told somebody that you know before they got a dialysis so i might be the first one that they heard say this so please drop in the comments what you're going through as well another one is anemia you guys know i've been battling anemia for a while but did you guys know that hemodialysis can reduce red blood cell production i learned that after the fact right and so many people i noticed on my channel also deals with anemia but if you're on hemodialysis, I did learn that it does reduce the red blood cells production. So if you are on hemodialysis and you have anemia, you could ask your doctor if they have it, they should have already incorporated something that they can put into, um, into the machine as you're doing your dialysis to help, you know, deal with the anemia issues that you're dealing with. Now that I'm off of dialysis and have the kidney transplant you guys know how i first of all i'm just eating better right but not only that i am taking geritol and that helps with my anemia and actually i'm not anemic anymore so i'm not even going to say um anemia but those were things that i dealt with in the past as well so that was another complication just as well that i was dealing with while i was on dialysis so another one that I dealt with was stenosis. You guys already know, I show you guys on my video all the time that I'm just prone to narrowing of the veins, right? And it is so painful. And the only way for that to get fixed is that you have to go and see your the vein specialist for them to balloon it out. But that was a big one. It was very common for me. Um, so I was constantly going in. And for me, I can't do that awake. So every time I used to have to get put down anesthesia, I had to go through the whole process every single time. And so that's why another factor of why I don't have this anymore, um, because I was just dealing with stenosis all the time. So if you guys deal with the vein narrowing or you feel that pain in your arm where the blood is rushing through, you need to go and seek um, medical attention because something needs to be done. It shouldn't be hurting you all the time. Now, if it hurt a little bit while you're at dialysis, okay, we'll give that a pass, right? But if you're at home and you're just sitting around, taking a shower, sleeping, you should not be in pain. So I took that as a sign that I needed to seek medical attention and you should as well. Another common one is fluid overload, right? I know when you're on dialysis, you're not supposed to drink a lot because it takes a lot for them to pull off when it goes when you go into dialysis but there was times where i had too much fluid and it was painful those days where they really got to pull it it's painful at dialysis at least for me so over time i got in a regimen i just told myself i wasn't going to be drinking a lot of you know water fluid certain things like that because i didn't want to have to have so much fluid pulled off and me just like struggling at dialysis um but post kidney transplant I got to drink up and that's a struggle because I'm coming from the world where I wasn't drinking much liquid at all. And now after, it's just so much to deal with. That's the hard part. But the complication is that sometimes you would have too much fluid on your body. And especially you have to be very, very mindful when the weekend comes. So for me, my dialysis treatment was on Friday and my next treatment wouldn't be till Monday. So that weekend, I had to be really cautious. Like if I'm going out with friends or if I'm doing stuff, like I just have to be mindful of what I'm putting in my body on those off times. During the week, you know, it's different, right? But the weekends, you want to go out, you want to do certain things. Um, just be very careful of what you're consuming and how much you're consuming. Another big one is fatigue out of this world, okay? I had, I felt like I had 
chronic fatigue because there'll be sometimes like I just like oh my god I can't stay up anymore I gotta go I gotta look looking like I'm crazy I'm like I gotta go sleep I have to lie down I feel like I'm about to pass out because I need to sleep and so I would just be sleeping all the time anywhere doesn't matter um I'll just fall asleep and so it was just that's another symptom that I dealt with it's just chronic I'm gonna call it chronic you could call it fatigue but I'm gonna say it was chronic fatigue because I was always so tired and so drained. Um, and it could just be mentally. I had a lot going on just as well. But dialysis took a toll on me. Hemodialysis is already tough. Um, I don't know what PD feels like. Um, but everybody that I've spoken to that's done both says that hemodialysis is a little bit harder for them. But again, you guys already know my story and why I chose hemodialysis. I didn't care if it was hard. Um, it's just that. I did what was best for my lifestyle. But like I said, chronic fatigue, look out for that. Then you'll also have access complications. There was many times where we had complications, maybe getting the needle in, um, certain things like that. So you have to be mindful of that well, but also just taking care of your access. You might have a pore or you might have the fistula. I'm not sure. Some people have a graft, but just make sure that you're taking care of it and you're cleaning and you're maintaining it because you don't want this to get affected. There's many people that, you know, access ports get affected as well. That could be a complication. Um, oh, that was a complication for me. I forgot about that. You guys, I have two holes right here. These two holes in my chest because I had a complication. I had an infection um, when I had the port. And so we had to pull out one. Let me tell you, I had this doctor. I don't know why they just feel like um, we could just handle pain. I don't know. They always feel like, this is from my, you know, African-American people, that we can tolerate pain a little bit more than others. And that is not true. And I'm going to need these doctors and these hospitals to stop that stigma because that is not true. We feel pain just as well and maybe on that same level, right? But this doctor literally just tried to yank. I will never forget that. Yank that pour out of my chest. I think the whole emergency room, like the whole place heard me screaming for their life to the point where I felt like I was going to slap him to tell him to not touch me. Like at that point, I was like, no, I need a new doctor and you need to let go. So eventually they left it in. I actually found um, another doctor. He put me to sleep. They took out the catheter nicely. No issues with this doctor. They understood the pain that I was going through and they put in a new one because this one was infected at the site. So just be careful in how you're cleaning and make sure you're cleaning it. And again, I was brand new into dialysis. I didn't understand certain things. And, you know, I was in so much pain. I didn't want to touch. I didn't want to deal with certain things. Um, I was just scared, right? I was scared of what could happen, the unknown. I'm like, man, this is about my heart. Everything's like, think about these veins all go towards your heart. And like, I was just like, I was freaking out, okay? I'm be honest. I was like really struggling. But over time, you learn certain things, you educate yourself and make sure you guys are educating yourself. Don't be naive. Don't just sit down and accept anything. Learn about the complications. And just because I'm sitting here telling you guys about my personal complications, there are a ton more out there. There's so many people that deal, no two people are the same. What I might experience, you may not experience. And the next person might experience something totally different. So take time to research the difference between hemodialysis and PD. Figure out, you know, which one it fits best for your lifestyle. Again, there's so many complications in anything in life. Um, again, hemodialysis saved me. It gave me a chance by just cleaning out my blood, getting rid of all that waste and stuff, it kept me going, it kept me alive. And so I'm completely grateful for the technology because back in the day, like I used to always say, a lot of people didn't make it back in those days because none of these resources were available to them as they are for us now. So that's my short little video, not really that short, but my video on my complications that I deal with. Comment below, let us know what you have dealt with as well because we are a community. Even though the channel says Chrissy Mac, it is all of us, guys. So many people are learning. We're all learning from each other. I learn every day, right? Just because I've been on, you know, dialysis and I had a kidney transplant, I still learn just as well as you guys. 
So take your time and you research and you learn. All right, guys, I love and I appreciate you. And I'll see you guys next time. See you guys next time.